starting a live video, so we got to make sure that uh, um, we say things that are good for all the audiences out there. Okay, somebody's opened up a can of, of Pepsi. I haven't looked up to see who's doing it, or Coke or something. But why have they not cracked their Bible? I don't know. <laughs> oh! oh, 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 oh There's a lot of cracking of drinks and this and that. Leave that for later. Let's get into the word. Amen. Oh, it's the bond. It's the bond. <laughs> and I was right. There's no Bible back there. He's cracking a can. But we're getting into the word this morning. We're gonna crack. We're gonna crack open something that's far better than any kind of energy drink you'll ever taste. However, Amen. it will give you energy. <laughs> it will give you energy. It's um, it's the word of God. Jesus is the bread of life. Amen. He's the living water. There was a man named Teddy Bolton. He was about 84 or 85 years old, and we went to Costa Rica. And this man, uh, he prayed and prophesied over 500 people. <clears throat> he wore out two or three interpreters. And this was under the Spirit of the Lord that strengthened him. And I, I said to him, I said, man, if they, could, if they could have that kind of a energy that could be an energy drink, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> but they don't have it. But Jesus can empower. See, the Spirit can quicken it the mortal body. They can quicken it. And so, you know, being at that age, he came under some great, uh, man, just some great power of God. He ministered, <clears throat> ministered for hours, wore out a few interpreters, you know, at 80, 84. You shouldn't slow down. You should speed up in the spirit as you get older. Your body might be Perishing, but your inward man's being renewed day by day. Come on. All right. Um, turn to Deuteronomy 6. Take, turn to the left. <laughs> Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Genesis, Exodus. Like four books in. Uh, Deuteronomy 6. <laughs> <laughs> Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4 he says Hear O Israel the Lord our God is one and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy soul with all thy mind and with all thy strength ok that's um, the first commandment with a, that's the, the commandment there that will bring you life if you put Jesus, if you seek first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, everything, everything that you're looking for, is in Him. It's in, it's in Jesus. Everything that you're looking for. See, if you seek first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, everything else will be added unto you. Turn to Matthew 22:37. Go ahead and stand up. Let's read this verse. I don't want you to fall asleep in this symbolic heat. I want you to do a few jumping jacks, maybe some push-ups. I don't know. We'll see. Matthew 22:37. <clears throat> Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. Barry McGuire had that song. Yeah. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. It's a good album, actually. With all thy mind. It's a good album. And with all thy strength. All right, turn to Mark 12 30. As you're standing up, turn to Mark 12. Verse 30. And he says, and go to verse 29. And Jesus answered him, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Oh, amen. One Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. <clears throat> Come on. Amen. Now turn to Luke 10:27. Luke 10, 27. And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy, thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Lord, I pray, Lord, as we minister today, God, you would change hearts. God, that you would destroy the works of hell and bring in the works of heaven. That <laughs> eternal fruit would remain and change lives. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can be seated. Yes. Next time, I'm going to have the worship like three times as long. I'm going to go until every man 
sings and worships. In fact, I might not even do it. Maybe I'll do worship all day until I get every last one of you guys to sing and to praise the Lord. Not sing. Oh. The reason is, is because God is looking for, he's looking for your voice. Yes. He might hear Alan. He might hear Ian. He might hear a couple of you. And it's not about being seen or looking in front of people. That, that counts for nothing. Amen. It's about the heart. It's about your heart. You don't have to shout. You don't have to, you know, be silent. It's about you, you know, being serious about coming in and worshiping the Lord. And about, you know, lifting your voice to God. God wants to connect with you. He wants, he wants that fellowship, the pleasure of his company in this life. You're missing out, my friends, Amen. if you can't open your mouth. And you can't say the name of Jesus. If you can't lift up the name of Jesus, if you can't praise his name, you're somebody that's bound by devils right. and you need to be free. That's right. But the Bible says in Psalms 91, those that set their love upon the Lord, I will deliver them. Hallelujah. Maybe you go to say it, the name of Jesus, and a demon has you bound. Then rebuke the demon. Say, demon, go in Jesus' name. I resist you. You have that authority. Luke 10. I saw Satan fall from heaven like light. Chapter 10, that's like 19, 17 or 19, says, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. I've given you, put your name in there, I've given you power over all the power of the devil. Amen. That's right. Something I learned from T.L. Osborne, if you read my Bible, you'll see them, they, all those words are crossed out, and I put Barry in there. I write my name in there. Because when I'm, when I'm reading it, you know, and even right there where, Je where Jesus says, I am the light of the world, I write my name in Barry's the light of the world. Not Amen. because I'm Jesus, but Jesus is seated at the ha right hand of the Father and he's in me. Amen. And so the, the people are going to see you. They're going to see you, but they need to see Jesus in you. That's right. I'm not Hallelujah. saying that I'm God. He is God. I'm a little G. I'm a son of God. That's right. I'm a son. I'm That's joint right. heirs with Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm Jesus' little brother. Amen. By his blood, I've been washed and redeemed. I'm welcome in the family I'm adopted in. Amen. You guys are not bastards anymore. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of bastards out there that we need to become in ministering the gospel so they become sons. Yeah. Yeah. The, the me next message is going to be from son. bastard to son. Amen. Amen. Don't be illegitimate. You don't have to be. Glory. You can get the blood of Christ Amen. to wash you and so you're not a bastard anymore. There was one man that went around in the turn of the century and he'd go to the steel mills and he'd be stay like, you all, you all are bastards. And he'd get mad. And he'd be, come in here, why, tonight? And then he was an evangelist. <laughs> come by here tonight. And so he would come out and real mad, you know, they get saved. He was an evangelist. That's amazing. He did stuff. He did stuff like that. Oh, that sounds like Larry Reed would do something like that. All right, now, uh, yeah, Luke 10, 27. He says, and he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and, not, and thy neighbor as thyself. Now, um, the Bible says love is the bond of perfection because when you walk in love, you're walking in perfection. Because when you walk in love, you're not doing things against God and you're not doing things against your fellow man. There was a, there was a, a dude that was in here and... You know, the, the conversation has come up about Calvinistic th thoughts and Ar Ar Armenian thought processes of predestines, once saved, always saved. These conversations go on, and I can care less about them because I care about the Word of God and what it says, okay. not what somebody had said a long time ago and came up with this doctrine and that doctrine. But there was people that had been coming to the men's home, and I told them, and I said to them, hey, you're going to die. You're going you're gonna to die. You're going to... You're, you're going to be destroyed. And uh, they don't listen, and then they die. They're destroyed. And even this last one um, that was a couple of weeks ago, and I told him, I said, man, you're going you're gonna, to, there's no grace for you, bro. Like, you have not walked right, and you've been sideways, and your life has been spared so many times. Come on. But I said, you're going to die. You are going to die in your, in your addiction and your sin if you do not seek God and get serious and he had this thought process of once saved always saved and I know there's scriptures that like you know you're sealed in the Holy Ghost Romans 8 nothing can separate you from the love of God not life or death not principality power all that but then there's also scriptures about people that have walked away from God that if you, you walk away that it would be better if you never came because maybe in hell when those demons are tormenting you they're reminding you about when you were serving God and they're putting extra pressure on you when you're in hell. 
Maybe that's why. I don't know why. I'm just guessing now. That's not the word of God, but it says it's better if you never heard, yes. if you heard and walked away. And so my point is, you know, why, um, th why do people like my brother who would shout out for God in the streets, who would want to go, you know, talk to people about God, but he would, he would, he would not be serious about walking with God for all these years. See, it's different, my friends, for people who know how to walk with Jesus and don't, and those that just choose, than, than those that don't know how to walk with God. It's not a gimmick. There's, 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 the Bible says, to him who knows to do right does not to him it is sin. Mm -hmm. So there's more accountability and responsibility for people that have a lot of understanding and knowledge and choose not to than people that don't really know how to get free. See, God has had a lot of grace on me with a lot of different faults and a lot of different um, hang-ups and addictions. Because one thing I did never, I don't do is I don't justify my sin. If I'm doing something wrong and I see it in the Word, I don't try to twist the Word and find scriptures to support me being a knucklehead. So I say, God, I'm not yeah. right. I don't feel right. My attitude isn't right. I need your help. Only you can change me. Only you can do this work. And God doesn't leave me. He comes and he walks with me and he changes me and he restores my soul and he gets me right because you cannot start to justify your sin and your dirt and think you're going to you're going to be okay. That's on a, that's a slippery slope to hell. When you start twisting the word trying to find scriptures that say that you can do this or that. I got news for you. Addiction is not part of recovery. The Bible says who the sun sets free is free indeed. The Bible says I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he baptizes in the spirit and fire. And so don't start compromising and making excuses for your lame lifestyle. Invite Jesus in to change your lame lifestyle and make you conform to the word. And here it says that you shall love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And this one individual, he gets right out of prison after a little bit of time, about a year. And there, he was all whacked out when he was here before. And he, he gets out. Um, first thing he does is run and go, does methamphetamines. And I asked him, I said, why in the world would you go down to the connection and do methamphetamines? He says, well, I thought I should do it before I got really uh, my life going and all my job and stuff and then lose everything. I was like, that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Why didn't you get out and say, you know, I'm going to love God like, ne like never before? Amen. Amen. You know, why am I, why am I, why not going to love God like <laughs> never before? See, the thing is, is that he, he had this attitude, once saved, always saved. But yet, that's simply not the scripture. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Is there grace and mercy for people that are struggling with things and walking this life? Yes, there is. Jesus' blood came because we were messed up, not because we had it all together. Amen. There's cleansing for every man. The, the, you're valuable if you're a human being, and the blood of Christ is there for you. But you cannot live in your sin. If you go out and sin, a worse thing will come upon you. This man, he died, and he got killed. This warning that the Lord has given to me to warn people about, I've warned many times. Most of them have died. Not many of them had come to life and, 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 and cried out. One brother, the Lord showed me he was going to die just because his mouth was so destructive. He was saying such negative things and such destructive things. I'm like, you're going to die. The confession of your mouth, the decrees and the commands that you're making are death. And it's going to come upon you. Yes. And a week and a half later, he died. Um, but let me talk this morning. I'm not talking about all that. Well, I am talking about all that. But I do have some scriptures down here. No, we're talking about loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Why don't you and I outdo ourselves to love God and to love other people? Outdo, compete with each other. The Bible says don't compare yourself to one another. That, that's foolish because everybody's been given different gifts and different measures of faith. So you might compare yourself, you know. Everyone wants to compare themselves to Charles Manson and say, I'm not such a bad guy, right? <laughs> but... You compare yourself to Jesus. Amen. That's who you're supposed to be comparing yourself yeah. to. Yeah. That's it. Then, then you might have some issues. You know? But you compare yourself to like the lowest ranking guy and think you're pretty good. You've been given all these gifts. And on Judgment Day, when the transparency of the will of God for your life and the books that were written about you before you were born is revealed, and then your life is shown, 
it might be, well, nowadays they don't have transparency. Back when I was a kid and learning in school, they had something called transparency. They would put this like sheet on a mm -hmm. light bulb and they would write with a marker and then it'd go up on the wall. It was a transparency. Mm -hmm. Nowadays they have PowerPoints on big screens, you know. So people are like, what's that transparency? So you guys are looking at me like, what is it? <laughs> yeah. It's a plan, a blueprint of how your life was supposed to go. Did you know, and I'm going to show you in a minute, that there was books written about your life before you were born about what you were supposed to do in God Hallelujah. and what you have. And some people oh, wow. live and die and never find out why they were born, let alone walk it out. They never even, they never even enter in. And you need to get up in the morning and pray and, and say to the Lord, I agree with the books that were written about me in heaven before I was born, and I call them forth. I agree with heaven. You may not know what those books are. You may not have understanding in your mind what they are. Maybe you have glimpses. Maybe you do. But when you start getting your mouth agreeing with heaven, then heaven flows through your authority on this earth and brings out the works of Christ through you. And you start changing in your life. So sometimes people are wanting to change. They're wanting to change their life. They're wanting to walk in newness of life. They want to break off the old patterns. But they're doing it in their own strength, their own ability, their own power. And that's why Romans 8, 13 says, Through the Spirit you mortify the deeds of the body. Why do we spend a little time in worship? Because when you worship or you set your mouth and your heart on God. And when, let me tell you this. When you come in worship, don't you dare do the creator of all the universe the disrespect of speaking words to him. And yet your mind is thinking about something different. <coughs> I love you, Lord. And you're thinking about Bitcoin. I praise you, Jesus. And you're thinking about the football game after the Sunday service. Oh, I magnify you, Jesus. And you're thinking about Burger King's Whopper special, right? <laughs> no, this is not good. You've got to go out there and snatch up your mind and say, Mind! Yeah. I'm talking to you. You don't run me, I run you. I control you. That's right. I dominate you. The natural mind is enmity against the things of God. It's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. It'll run you into the ground. You need to whip that old boy right into, into just right into a submission. You gotta whip your natural mind to submission. Say, shut up, mind. I'm in charge now. Amen. You will offer the creator of the universe Amen. words of love, and you will be present Amen. as I'm offering these words to him. Because King David talks about. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. My soul cried out for you, O God. What is a soul? Mm -hmm. Your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions. Amen. i got to be honest with you. There's times my spirit's been really engaged in wanting it, but my soul's off down the street. It's doing something different. Then I snatch it up and I say, soul, uh -uh, you will not do that. you got to be a disciplined follower of Christ. Yeah. That's not just a believer. It's a disciplined follower. See, I don't Amen. need music to worship yeah. Paul and Silas didn't need music, and they didn't even have to raise their hands for all you conservative people out there that sit in your chair and just sing a hymn, and you never stand and raise your hands. You can still get into worship. Paul and Silas were into stocks and bonds. They had chained, Their hands were chained. Yeah. Their feet were chained, and they began to praise God, and worship came out of them with such magnitude and intensity that it caused an earthquake. They started worshiping God. Why were they in prison for casting out a demon out of a girl? Seems like they would have got a merit match. They did. <laughs> they like it. Jesus said, those who follow me and those who want to do righteousness and those who want to do um, the things of God and the kingdom of heaven will suffer persecution in this earth. Let's just get that yeah. over. Amen. That's true. You will have some persecution in this life if you want to live for righteousness. Amen. And I say, I say, you know, I bring the, the, <laughs> the Pat Benatar song, hit me with your best shot. <laughs> Come on. You know, because you're not changing we crossed the line. <laughs> We've gone too far. Right. You know? I say bring it. Don't sing it, bring it. I got one half for fashion and another half for bashing. <laughs> and we're gonna fight because I ain't turning down. Very we're gonna walk with God, we're gonna walk with him with boldness. We're not turning down because we got a little persecution because yeah. somebody stepped on our toes. You know, we're gonna kick with fierce intensity. Listen, I am not gonna purr like a kitten when this whole world is in such turmoil wow. and people are dying and going to hell I'm going to roar like a lion yeah, that's, that's I'm going to tell you that right lion. now yeah. we're not soft we are not weak Christians we are mighty, we are meek which means that we are teachable and we're humble and we serve, but we are warriors Amen. we're warriors don't get that confused Amen. don't you ever get that confused exactly. 
Jesus taught with one having authority, not with weakness. That's right. Yeah. Jesus took a whip and drove out people that were doing unright things in the temple and getting off the track of what heaven was about. It took him some time to braid that whip. He was thinking about it. Come on. And for him to drive all those people out, he had some intensity. Yeah. You should have some intensity if Christ is in you. If, you. if I get around you and you're like a refrigerator full of Coors beer, I'll know that you're not of God. Because God is not a freezer. God is consuming fire. How and his servants are flames of fire. Amen. So if there's no fire coming off your life, something's wrong. That's right. Amen. And I, you know, I look at it and I think to myself, um, you know, these guys coming in with sincere hearts, never been in church, don't know anything about God, come right out of the penitentiary. And they, <laughs> they come in and they give their heart to the Lord and they're trying to many times serve God like they did the gangs or something else. And so... They think they can will their way through it, and you cannot. You literally got to kill your will and totally resurrender it all. And that's a hard process, letting go of something you've held on to that you've been comfortable with, that you understand. Letting go of this and grabbing a hold of the Lord's hands right. to lead you and guide you. Yes. Because you're like a two-year-old learning how to walk. You don't really know. You're not secure in it, but you grow into it. That's right. But God's grace and mercy is there during that time. And so people, you know, I was talking earlier about this cat, you know, who was doing this meth and he died. And these other guys that had been broken up. And I was thinking to myself, what if in their heart, their main goal in life was to love the Lord thy God? The reason why you guys are not sleeping around and having sex with people you're not married to is because you love God. Amen. Amen. The reason why you're not doing what Amen. pleases the flesh is because you love God. Amen. Maybe some of you do it because there's a fear of judgment day and that's not necessarily a bad thing the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom but you're really not going to walk this thing out with the intensity that you need and you're not going to get the victory in your life that you need until you can come into a loving relationship with God where he's everything yes and he and the pleasure of his company means more to you Amen. than anything yes yeah the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom but the love of God is a yes. higher level it's the completion of things God yes. says I'm the alpha and I'm the omega I'm the beginning I'm the end there's fear but there's love and perfect love casts yes. out all fear but when we talk about the fear of the Lord we're not talking about a fear like you would have fear of a human we're talking about a reverence a respect and yes. awe. Amen. We're talking about an understanding that the Creator that loves you and shed His blood for you. He did not hold back. It says in Romans, well, I was still a sinner. Christ died for me. What words of intensity that while I was in my sin. Just think of the worst thing that you've ever done. Just think about right now. If we showed a movie up here, a half hour of your life. And for a half hour, we showed all the worst parts of your life. And all the secret things that nobody knew. It was all up here. It's shown and seen. Let's put it on there. I've seen you guys real nervous right now. It's okay. I don't have the videos, but there's some pucker factor. Oh, the blood passed it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, one guy said to me one time, he goes, I'm uh, in jail unrightfully. I didn't do that crime. I said, well, just count it as, uh, you know, um, count it as some wages for all the crimes you did do. Come on. And he goes, that's a good point. Tell yeah. it. Tell <laughs> it. Tell <laughs> it. I was trying to make him feel better about his jail sentence. <laughs> Uh, you know, but, but the thing is, is that if we show this movie up here of all the bad things you've ever done, did you know God loved you as much then as he does when you were doing the best That's you right. Because right. his love didn't up, go up or down based on your performance or what you That's did. That's right. He's always loved you. Yes. You know, yes. think, of, think about that for a minute. That's a heavy one right there. Yes. That'll, yes. Make, yes. that'll make you uh, a little weak in the knees. Now, <laughs> let's look here at um, Revelations. Well, first of all, I want to go to Psalms 139.16. You make me so very happy, Jesus. I'm so glad. Psalms 139, 16. Yeah. It says, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in the in, in thy book of all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Okay, stop right there. There's um, Psalms 56, 8. Talks a little bit about the books too. 
but I'm going to stop right there. So I got to tell you, there was books written about you before you were born yeah. on what you were to do. Let, let me tell you this. You'll find in the Bible, the Bible talks about different books that are in heaven. There's books that were written about what you are to do and all the things. Now, when you get to heaven, are you going to have completed all the things that God had for you to do? <clears throat> well, you better get with it, knowing what that is and, and walking that out. Now, the other thing is, is there's other books. There's books. Let's just look at the other books. Here's, here's something, a book that was written about you before you were even born, before your substance. Let's read that again. Psalms 139, 16. Lord. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfected or unformed. Wow. Wow. And in the book of all my members, all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Before you were even created, a book was written about you in your life. The Bible says in Psalms 139 that God's um, thoughts towards you are more numerous than the sands of the sea. Amen. The Bible says here that he knows how many hairs are on your head. Think of that. And as you get older, that number goes down a little bit, so it's not quite <laughs> an intense mathematical equation. But God, but God knows them. Now let's look at this. <laughs> Revelation. <laughs> Revelation 20. Revelation 20, 12. Well, let's just go to 11. And I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face on the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Stop right there. Two books. Book one, getting into heaven or hell. Well, that's really not true. That's kind of true, but not really, because the people not written in the Lamb's Book of Life are thrown where? Into the lake of fire. Yeah. So you don't go right into hell. You go into the lake of fire then the lake of fire is emptied into hell. But anyways, hell wasn't even created for humans. It was created for the devil and his angels. But the devil hates you, and he wants to take you there, and he wants you to live in hell. But you can live in heaven now, and you can go to heaven. What is heaven? He says, this is eternal life, to know the Father. He says, this, he says do the works that lead to eternal life. And they said, what is that work in John 6? He says, to believe on the one who was sent. If you want to do the work that leads to eternal life, then believe on Jesus. Meditate the word. Get into Christ, know Him, walk with Him, and 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 you got to fight to believe, That's because right. all the world is saying it's foolish. All the yes. world is saying, hey, you know what? You, you know, let's say you had cancer, and all of a sudden they said you're gonna, you're terminal, you're going to die. It takes work to believe. The Bible says the law, of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has made me free from the law of sin and death. Right. So you got to take the Spirit, the words of Spirit, and fight and say, hey. Body, be whole. That's right. I'm talking to you, cancer. I curse you at your roots, cancer. Yeah. Spirit and infirmity, go from me in Jesus' name. Yes. I rebuke you now. Amen. I stand on the Amen. word of God. Hallelujah. And I stand with Jesus when he says, Amen. by his stripes, we were him. And I'm right. talking to you, body. Amen. In Jesus' yes. name, go. Yes. And so you get into in it mind. and you fight yes. with the spirit of the Lord. Amen. Many Christians are weak. Many Christians are ignorant and stupid. I can tell you the difference between ignorance and stupid. Ignorance is something that you haven't learned about your fault. No one ever taught you. Stupidity is when you've been taught you refuse to walk in it. That's right. Hmm. <laughs> That's being stupid. It's That's not right. your fault you're ignorant if no one ever taught you, but you will be held accountable. you got a Bible in your hands. That's right. Men and women have been burned at the stake yeah. for these words to be in English in your hands, and you let it collect dust and go on Netflix all the time. Come on, man. <clears throat> What's wrong with you? That's right. Yeah. And Amen. me. I'll throw, I'll throw myself in there, too. We've been a little hokey. Um, but Psalms 139 <laughs> Thy eyes did see my substance yet being unperfected thy book and all thy members were written which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them so right there we see that these books are written about your life what you were to do what God created you to do and then we see a book here in 20 verse 12 and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another set of books were open which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So you have a book of life, right? Right. But then you have another set of books that's open that's about your works. Right. So you have a book of life that, that you're either in or you're out. 
names get blotted out of there, that means it was in there to start. If it's blocked out, right? right? Wow. That's right. Wow. Yeah, true. But then you also have another book, book that's going to be about your works. You don't get to heaven based on how good you are. Thank God it's on the grace of Jesus. Oh, the yeah, None man. of us would make it. Man. We go to heaven because Jesus loves us. Yeah. But your works are based on how much you love him. That's right. And that's I said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. You love God, you're going to do the works. Don't say that you love God and that you don't love God. If you love God, you're going to do his works and you're going to love your brother. That's right. John says, don't say that you love God and then you don't love your brother who you can't see. Or your, your sister, sister or your grandma. Amen. So if you're a racist and you don't like another skin color, you are not a believer. You don't yeah. love God. You're not real. I love but if you are a Christian, you don't talk about race and you don't get down like that. It's not no. a big deal for you. Tell There's not man. a black church, a white church, a Mexican church, a Chinese church. It's just a church. Yeah. There's no male or female. There's no Jew or Greek, the Bible says. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. believers. That's right. what we are. That's beautiful. Amen. Amen. And so um, I love how the Bible just cuts through <clears throat> all the intellectual bull crap and gets yeah. down to the, the root of the heart of the matter. You That's know? Right. So um, here uh, we see that these set of, the second set of books were written. <coughs> and the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So every man gets judged according to his works. Amen. That's, that's good stuff right there. I like that. Pastor, can I ask you a question? Um, can you wait? Yeah. All right. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And I saw a new heaven, a new earth, and, and the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no and there was no more sea. Okay, so we see a passing away. But we saw a set of books. We we saw we looked at three sets of books here. There's some other scriptures that I'd like to get into maybe at, at a different time. But I want to say this: that you and I need to find out why we were born and walk in it. That's right. Yeah. People fight me so hard on praying in other tongues because Satan gets his eyes gouged out. It torments him day and night as you pray in the Spirit. Because you're bypassing your limited, your limited mind, your li limited mental capacity. You're going right into the Spirit. And in... Uh, Romans 8.26, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered in a human language. Okay? And he that searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Okay, then he that's searching the hearts is the Holy Spirit. He knows what the mind of the Spirit is, meaning He knows what was written in those books before you were born. Exactly. He knows the will of God. Because He makes intercessions for us according to the will of God. That's verse 27. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And we know that all things work together for good, that those who love God are called according to His purpose. Mm -hmm. So we have the, the mind, the will, and the purpose of God. He's talking about praying in other tongues. In Romans 8, 13, He says, Through the Spirit we mortify the deeds of the body. So I talk to you guys, I say, hey, pray in the Spirit. It's a really good idea that you spend time praying in the Spirit. Why am I saying that? Because when you start praying in the Spirit, if you don't know nothing and you just gave your life to Jesus, and yet you've, you've done marijuana all your life, you've done whatever you've done. I don't know what your, your, your issue is or your thing is, but you start praying in tongues, the Holy Spirit... The Bible says in Proverbs that the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord that searches out the deep things. You don't take a lamp or a candle. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. You don't take a candle into a bright place. You take it into a dark place. So you start, start praying in other tongues. The Apostle Paul said, do not forbid people to pray in tongues. If you've ever told people not to pray in tongues, you are going against the Bible, the apostles. You are going against Jesus. Stop it. And if you don't pray in tongues yourself, 
you might make heaven in your home, but you're going to have some keys that you're laying down where you're not going to be benefited. I'm going to always encourage you here, read the Word, get into the Word. Why do I say that? Because the Word of God is spirit and it's life, and you need spiritual food. That's a key. I'm always going to tell you, worship God. Why am I going to say that? Because in John 4, he says, the Father has been waiting a long time for true worshipers to worship in spirit and truth, that connection of worship, yeah. to love God, that intimacy, that fellowship. I'm always going to tell you, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Why is it? Because it's a key. It's a tool. And any one of those things, if you don't do them, you're going to be hindered. I'm always going to tell you, win souls, win souls, win souls. Why? Because, it says, do the work of an evangelist. Why? Because you have the ministry of reconciliation. Why? We want to plunder hell and populate heaven. Yes. Amen. This simple stuff. Why? Why do you fight? Here's the thing about praying in other tongues. It's a revelation gift. You start praying in tongues, understanding comes to you that you never, never had and couldn't with your own ability step into. Amen. You step into other realms of the spirit that are past your own ability in this life and this earth. And you start praying out those books in heaven. You might pray for hours and it's boring and you don't even know in your mind what's being said because the Bible says, he who prays in an unknown tongue prays not unto man, but unto God. His spirit's edified, but his mind doesn't understand. Unless it's in a church setting where there's tongues and interpretation and you get the prophetic understanding of a person speaking in tongues. Or anybody could stand up and prophesy with that person who spoke in tongues who has the gift of interpretation. Sometimes people be stand up in church service and pray in tongues and I'll know what they said. And I'll be like, should I stand up and say it? And somebody else stands up and they say exactly what I knew they said. But people that have that understanding of the interpretation know what's being said. Well, why don't they just prophesy? Why do they pray in tongues and prophesy? I don't know. Ask the Father. I didn't write it. I just abide by it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So here's what I'm trying to tell you guys. Is that love God. Start getting into the will of God and not your own will. That's right. There's books that have already been written about what you're to do. There was a few people that died and went to heaven and talked about these books. One guy died and went to heaven, um, and he was talking about um, how in the books it had him learning the flute and all this other kind of stuff. So when he came back, he learned the flute, and he did these different things that were in the books that he, he didn't really know what to do. Wow. But you might not die and go there. Right. You could just ask the Lord, you know, to, to understand what it is that you're to do. You're not supposed to sit in a chair. That's right. And live a life Come on. A and go out without doing nothing. Come on. That's, right. That's right. You count. Your life counts. Your fingerprint counts. God has an anointing on each, indi pers each individual person that's different. Every, every human that's been born's fingerprint is different. Every snowflake is different. Every wave that crashes is different. Every leaf is different in God's creation. God is very specific and creative and, and unique. Your life counts. The blood of Jesus has been shed for you. You're valuable. You know, you're valuable. You're loved. Hallelujah. And you get in here. So, so some, some of them, some of the guys have, have failed because they didn't know. They didn't know how to be free. They didn't know how to be free. There's some grace in, in God's economy for that. If they were a believer on, on Christ, there's not grace for a person to receive forgiveness and remain the change, remain the same and not change and resist the same grace that set them free will change them. If you walk along with the Lord, you are to grow up and you're supposed to be conformed to the image of Christ. That's right. These books that were written, one about what you were to do before you were born, a book written about what you would do. Now on Judgment Day and your works, I'm and this is my opinion, I'm seeing... A blueprint or a plan of what heaven said you were to do and what you could have done and then a blueprint or a plan of what you actually did in the difference of that yeah. you know that's that's what we're looking at yeah. there's a blueprint in Christ for your life for your anointing for your ministry for what you were to do when you throw a seed into the ground that seed on the inside has a total map of the entire plant grown up and it dies and then it grows out and the plant grows you have a blueprint a seed on the inside of your spirit and you start start praying in other tongues you start reading the word you come online to why you were born 
And now all of a sudden, you're not wasting your time or your life. You will not pray in tongues one syllable that it won't change you, that it's not supernatural, Amen. that it's not a supernatural or it's raising the Amen. dead, that it won't benefit you or be valuable to your life. Yes, you sow in the Spirit, you're going to reap righteousness. You will not read the Word of God and meditate the Word of God if you're serious about it, to get to know Jesus, where it won't build you up and, 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 and change your life. But my message today is on love of the Lord thy God. And I'm going to bring a pen and paper and I'm going to have um, a time, maybe I'll do it in morning prayer, where everyone writes out that scripture. Thou shalt love the Lord their God with all the heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's right. Because that's where it starts. Yes. The reason why this man died and overdosed is because he loved pleasure more than God. Yeah, he'd get out in the streets and scream about the Lord and be bold about it, you know. But... Where's the love? Like, if you love God, man, you don't go out and get high. You don't cheat on your wife. You don't do people dirty. If you love God, you don't do him dirty. That's right. So if you love God and you're still doing dirty things, I can show you how to employ the power of the Holy Spirit to break those chains that have controlled you and you were under the power of the devil to do the devil's will. I can show you how to do that. We can cast those devils out. Or you can cast them out by yourself. I just That's give you right. scriptures. You don't need me. I can show you how to walk out of every bondage if you're right. honest about your bondage and you're honest Hallelujah. where you're at and, and, and you want to serve God. Yes. But if you don't even love God, if you don't even have a heart to know Him, what good, what good is it? I'm not going to pray for you. I cast demons out of you. In two weeks, you'll be filled with eight more. More wicked than the first one I cast out. Come on. There's got to be a desire. The Spirit of the Lord draws. The Spirit of the Lord draws a man. You can't even come to Jesus unless you're drawn. Oh, so, Lord, right now, I just uh, thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord, for this uh, message, Lord, of, of, um, Lord, of your love. And I pray, Lord, if there's somebody here today that doesn't know you, that they'd be born again. If you're here today and you don't know Christ and you never received him in your heart, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray with you that you can receive him in your heart if that's you today. Just raise up your hand. I'll, we'll pray with you that you can receive them, Jesus in your heart. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible also says all who call in the name of the Lord shall be saved. And with the simplicity of the gospel, you just opening up your heart, saying yes to Jesus and inviting him in, believing on him, you pass from death to life. It's a, it's a simplicity of the gospel. It's a simple prayer that saved me and set me free. It wasn't the prayer. It was Jesus but it's, it's a simple gospel that saved me and set me free. It's not complex. It's not an easy gospel because it'll cost you everything and it'll be totally worth it if you go down this trail. Yeah. It'll, it'll take your very life. But what can you give in exchange for your life? If you seek your own life, you're going to lose it. If you give up your life for the gospel's sake, you'll save it. That's right. And that's the truth. That's the word of God. So Lord, I ask you right now, Father God, just to work on the hearts, Lord, that are here. Father God, that they would be drawn to you. I break off every chain, every bondage, every lie. Lord, there's been books written about these men. Some of them haven't even started, God, to walk with you. They've been under the plan of the devil all their life. The devil hasn't even really had to visit them except for once or twice. And then the rest of the time, Satan has run his plan on them. And he didn't even, it didn't even take much effort of the devil to destroy their life. They were just so ignorant and in bondage. They've just been walking in it. But this day, I break off your work, Satan. Satan, I'm here. Satan, I am here, and I'm a man of God. I rebuke you and your works over the minds and hearts of the ones that are here. And I declare the will and the plan of God, the books that were written, to be released. I agree with heaven's books now. Hallelujah. Over the lives that are here and watching on Facebook, I agree with the books that were written of heaven over these lives and over my life. And we say, yes, Lord, have your way. We say, yes, Lord, we agree with the books that were written. And we'll step into it, and we'll be obedient to it. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.